Welcome to our new moon class. I'm Lizzie Lassiter, and we have the great privilege of learning today with Mary Richards. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lizzie. So the official title of this class is Pelvic Integration Series with Mary Richards. But just for a laugh, Mary, tell us all what you wanted to name this class. I wanted to call it Lumbo Pelvic Hip Integration Training Series. You know, it just rolls off the tongue. Lumbo Pelvic Hip Integration Training Series. Okay, unpack that for us. What does it mean and what are we going to be doing today? Well, <laughs> see, the pelvis is everything, right? <laughs> okay. And it's this grand roundhouse in the body where all of our movement energy, especially our movement of related to, you know, getting around the planet, locomotion goes through the pelvis and it's connected to the low back, which is a huge zone of force and load transfer and the hips, the transverse axis of, of the hips, which is the primary movement axis of the body. So it just makes sense to think about the lumbo pelvic hip complex, to think of it as a unit, a functional unit. Which I think is so interesting because originally when we thought of this class and we were speaking about it, I asked for a pelvic floor series. So why do we need to think bigger than just the pelvic floor? Because the pelvic floor, now we can certainly do exercises that are related to the pelvic floor itself, to the uh, levator ani, the bulbospongiosis, et cetera. We can, we can do things like Kegels and the like that are targeted to that region of the body. However, that is not how we're put together functionally. And the pelvic floor is integrally and intimately related to uh, core stabilization to the stabilizing of the lumbar curve, as well as to managing the weight of the pelvis in the context of gravity, as well as related to sitting, standing, walking, trikonasana, bodhakanasana, et cetera. So separating the pelvic floor has limited functional utility. We really, I believe, want to do things that bring more of us together. Oh, I love that. Before we look, we're going to look at a little bit of anatomy just to orient ourselves. And because we can't help it when we're working with Mary, we love to learn anatomy. But because everyone's going to immediately fall in love with studying with you, Mary, tell us where we can find you on the internet. Oh, uh, yoga with Mary Richards.com. And, uh, you know, I do all these things. I do a monthly asana lab and stuff like that. So I like to torment people, you know, in many different contexts. <laughs> exactly. And in case you did not receive this class in your inbox, I'll put the link below and you should sign up for our new moon mail. We just send out a video like this, a free full length class every month. Let me share my screen and show you one more thing. This is Lassiter.yoga, www.lassiter.yoga. And in case you want to dive deeper with Mary, let me show you classes or courses that Mary teaches or co-teaches. So experiential anatomy, that is a deep dive into anatomy, movement literacy for yoga teachers and serious students. And then somatic strength is um, we learn how to increase load on the body. It's one of my favorite courses that we've made and it's really about functional movement and we focus on resiliency. So it's not about getting buff or, or, or strong for no reason, but it's really about radiant aging. That's what I would say. And another beloved course is deep rest, which is kind of 
from a science side, Mary is a yoga therapist about um, how to recover from exhaustion, combat burnout, and we call it somatic self-care. Anything yes. else? No, those are the Mary Richards sweet spots. Oh, and I can tell you one more thing. Mary is collaborating on our upcoming course about yoga for menopause. I'll include that link as well below. We have a free mini course to celebrate the launch of our bigger course about yoga for menopause. And you can sign up for the free men, uh, mini course right now. So let's look at the anatomy. I'm going to pull up Pocket Anatomy, which is an app that graciously allows us to use their visuals. You can, um, I'll put a link as well for the Pocket Anatomy lap, app in the uh, description below. So what are we looking at here, Mary? Just orient us a little bit. So we're looking at the front of the body, uh, the skeletal structure. This is a female skeleton. And what we see is we see the lumbar, which is five vertebrae, the sacrum, the bowl of the pelvis, which is created by the ilia, the, you know, elephant ear like bones. And then you can see the, the hips, the heads of the thigh bones, the femurs, the surgical necks of the femurs, the greater trochanters. And as we look at this image, this uh, representation of the skeleton, you can see that the low back is directly connected to the bones of the pelvis through the sacrum. And we mm -hmm. can see that the heads of the thigh bones, they sit in hip sockets created by the big bones of the pelvis. And so when we look at this structurally, I hope that it really inspires us to think when we lay on muscle, layers of muscle, Lizzie, really inspires us to think of the lumbar, the pelvis and the hips as a functional unit. Because now we're looking at the big, uh, psoas and the iliacus, the psoas, they're, they're, uh, you know, attached. They basically govern the relationship between the chest and the thighs. The iliacus fill those, uh, fossa, those cavities of the big elephant ear bones of the pelvis, the ilia. And if we look then down the image and you start to see the adductor brevis and you can see the obturator uh, in the back there, the, one of the hip rotators, you know, we all of this is so int intimately connected with tissue. And if you add on another muscle layer, Lizzie, we now see smaller hip flexors and we see the the gastrointestinal tract, as you're looking at the large intestine, the bladder and the uterus. And above it, you can see, you know, uh, the stomach and the liver and the gallbladder and hiding back there, um, the pancreas and the kidneys. So we begin to really, I think, visualize how our organs are held in this kunda, this vessel of the body. And it's most, many of our organs are, are certainly our uh, GI organs, as well as our organs, you know, the bladder and organs of reproduction are related to the low back, the pelvis and the hips. Yeah, this is what I'm hearing as your kind of big idea today, which is so clear from these visuals is that what I'm what I'm sort of understanding is that you're saying that the femurs and the pelvis and the sacrum and the low back are all we we can't separate them. They're physically connected. And so dysfunction in one part is going to affect the other, or even dysfunctional movement or range of motion in one part is going to affect the other. And then the other piece, which you're adding, which is so fascinating, is you're saying that it's also related then to the muscle layer, not just the bones, but the muscles, and then the organ layer. I hadn't really thought about that before. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, people forget about the organs, right? but your organs are actually helping stabilize your low back and your pelvis and your hips. Okay. Okay. 
I mean, it's okay. fascinating, like the way they're put together and how we maintain pressure within our belly cavity is related to stable stabilization of the low back and the sacroiliac joints and also related to how the heads of the thigh bones are sitting in the hip sockets. Okay, amazing. Let's move to the mat. As I do, I'm going to pin myself. Mary's still here with us, but I'll be big. Tell us a kind of overarching, what is this series? How many poses? Okay. What do we need? This lumbo pelvic hip integration training series? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do nine uh, asana-based uh, exercises followed by Stonehenge. Shavasana. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you're going to need a couple things. Uh, you're going to need two yoga blocks, a strap, and a small towel or washcloth, mm -hmm. a blanket, and a bolster. Okay, okay? great. And... and I was just going to say, Mary's going to offer a couple modifications, but as always, listen to your intuition, take care of yourself. Don't do anything that creates pain. Use your common sense. Yeah. And also know that when we're talking about sensation, it could be different for you. Okay. Yeah. So especially if you know that you have bulging or herniated disc at lumbar three, and four, four, five, five, L5 and S1, you may not experience some sensation. There may be a sensory void and that's okay. Do the best that you can to create the shape of the movement and give yourself that, then you know you have homework. Give yourself an assignment to practice these movements where there seems to be a sensory void so that you can determine after about three weeks or so if you need to do follow up with, you know, a, a, a physical therapist, a physiatrist, orthopedist, et cetera. Okay. Just exactly. Yes, that. And last thing before we get started. Remember the principle we always talk about in our courses of amplitude. So you are allowed to do less. Do half of the movement, taste the movement, make it smaller, modify to fit your body. Absolutely. You know, because we want... It we want a, a ladder of progression or escalation, mm -hmm. as I like to say. And these movements, I say that they're asana based because they're from bija, the seeds, the seeds of asana and all asana arises from the primary, the seven primary functional movements of the body. Mm -hmm. So we, like we just, hinge, squat, twist, those type of things. Exactly. And so we're planting, we, we've got these seeds, right? And we're just nourishing the soil around them, giving them uh, nutrients, water, and sunshine. Okay. Okay, great. So how so, do we start? Okay. So we, the way progressions work is we begin by reducing gravity. And then we gradually move against gravity in what's called closed chains. But we're gonna start on the back body and you're gonna need uh, a block and a strap. So things can't be too bad, right? Cause you're, you're lying down. <laughs> it sounds good, <laughs> feels good. <laughs> okay, so let's just feel ourselves on the mat. Just noticing. Am I heavier on one side of the body versus the other? What does my breath feel like? Do I feel any tightness through my ribs, in my throat, in my face? And when I take the awareness 
into the pelvis and the pelvic floor. Is the pelvic floor moving at all with the breath? Do you feel any gentle stretch of the pelvic floor as you inhale and a subtle relaxation of the pelvic floor as you exhale? Just, just doing this sensory inventory. And when you're ready now, I'd like you to take your strap and you're gonna make a loop. And you'll place the strap around your ankles, across your ankle bones. And you just sort of have to, you know, do a little bit of happy baby maneuvering perhaps to get that strap around your ankles. And you want to have it snug, 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 so that you can set your feet about shoulder width apart and the strap is looped around your ankles. So are you holding on to it, Lizzie? Yeah. Okay, just, just wrap it around your ankles. Okay, so it'll go all the way around your ankles. Yes. And then tighten it up. Oh, okay. It's a little, little bondage practice here. Okay. Okay. Creating so it's an key. external ligament. Got it. And you want it so your feet can be set about shoulder width apart. And you can, now your feet are glued to the mat, but you're trying to pull out on the strap. Now take one of your blocks and place the block comfortably between your knees. And notice that Lizzie placed the block on its width. That is your preference, okay? Some folks, depending on your sacrum, you may have to hold the, the, the narrower aspect of the block. You may need to hold the block end to end, okay? So just go by feel. You wanna be able to hold that block firmly with the knees, while pulling out on the strap. You got that action, mm -hmm. Lizzie? Yeah. Now you're squeezing the dickens out of that block and you're pulling out on the strap and without pushing with your legs or pushing down through your low back, I want you to try and tuck and tilt your pelvis. So I want you to think about this movement arising from the pelvic floor. Okay. And it won't be as big as if you're just doing pelvic tucks and tilts, okay? Because see, a mm -hmm. lot of the time when we do pelvic tucks and tilts, we are really moving from our belly muscles, mm -hmm. from our hip flexors, and that makes sense but I'm asking us to take a different path mm. to move only from the pelvic floor. So keep squeezing the block and pulling the feet out against the strap. And then you're just tucking and tilting. And I'd love Lizzie to have a sensory report from you. Yeah, I'm feeling some deep sensations in the sacrum, in the inner thighs and the pelvic floor. Yes, 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 yes. That's excellent. And so we want to do this, oh, let's say 10 or 12 times for about a minute. I What's the breathing? Exhaling as you tilt? Uh, yeah, and exhale as you, as you posteriorly tilt, as you tuck, and inhale as you uh, anteriorly tilt as you roll your pubic bones down be toward the floor between your legs. So think about exhaling when you're contract when you're when you're reducing the belly space and inhaling when you're opening the belly space.
And I like to do, uh, I say 10 to 12 times, that's about a minute. And you, so it's about 10 to 12 rounds of breath. And then after and you've done, mm -hmm. last question, am I squeeze continuing to squeeze the block even when I release the pelvis down? Oh yes. You maintain <laughs> constant pressure on the block, constant tension on the strap. Mm. Okay. Enough. It's challenging, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I love that. Okay. So now, uh, you'll need to just set the block to the side for a moment and you can take the strap off of the ankles and you'll need your small towel or washcloth. Okay, so you see Lizzie has the, the small towel uh, folded up into a square, which is great. And Lizzie, I want you to fold it one more time. Okay, let yes. me just come to the camera so everyone can see. I have a, it's actually like a, yeah. Uh, my one of my kids dadas they're they're lovey for sleeping and then folded like this mary yes yes and we'll okay. check the, the thickness because we want it we want to be like goldilocks not too thick not too thin and then you're going to place that folded cloth under your the the sacrum where it meets your low back that's actually called the base of the sacrum so the the top of the sacrum as it meets your low back you're going to put it parallel. Yes. Okay. Like that. And it's just to fill the negative space. Mm -hmm. Now it may be too thick. So you may need to unfold it one time. The key is I want you to just fill the natural space between the back body and the mat. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to accentuate uh, extension. We just normal lumbosacral curve. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now place your fingertips on your ASIA, S, your anterior superior iliac spines, the eyes of your uh, hip bones, if you will. And which direction are they pointing, Lizzie? I'd say they're straight up or a tiny. Yeah, they feel pretty straight up. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to move the cloth down just a little bit, just mm -hmm. a little bit. And now check the ASIS again. And now, yep, they're pointing sort of over your knees, correct? Yeah, more diagonal. Exactly. Guess what? That's normal. <laughs> Okay, so if the ASIS are rolling back towards your body, towards your rib cage, you're tucking or posteriorly mm -hmm. tilting. If they're pointing directly toward the ceiling, you're more likely to tuck. So I mm -hmm. want us to move in the direction of an anterior tilt because believe it or not, that's the normal angle, what's called the angle of inclination in the sacrum. Okay? Mm-hmm worry about these terms too much, but just know this is what I'm looking for. Okay. So now take your block and place it lengthwise between your thighs, close to the root of the body without touching. And you've done this lengthwise, Lizzie. So flip it a quarter turn. Yes. So you've got the whole length of the block now, right? Yeah. Like that. Great. Just like that. And again, you play with the block placement for you. Some folks need to use a three inch block. Some folks need to use a four inch block. You know, you got to find what works for you. Feet are placed comfortably, arms heavy and relaxed uh, on the mat. Squeeze the dickens out of the block. You mm -hmm. are trying to turn that block to dust. Notice when you squeeze the block, do you tuck your tailbone? Yeah, that's called cheating. Okay. <laughs> But no, but see, but it's great because now we know, all right, we have this habit to tuck, right? We also know that we're interrupting the, the activation pattern between the pelvic floor, the abdominal muscles and the back muscles. Mm -hmm. All right. So find the neutral again, the ASIS on a, on a slight diagonal, you know, toward the wall at your feet, okay? Then mm -hmm. you can keep your fingers there if you need. You may need the biofeedback of touch. Squeeze, 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 squeeze the block again. 
and the pelvis doesn't move, correct? No, but what's so interesting is when the pelvis is not tucked, I suddenly feel the urge to take a deeper breath, like I have more space okay. for yes. the lungs. Yes, because your visceral column of support is getting organized and you're, you're, it's just, it does all these wonderful things for the pressure inside your body and it's turning on your deep abdominal muscles, your transversus abdominis, which gives great support to the breath. So it's all these beautiful things happen. <laughs> and so now squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the block. And I want you to pretend you're going to do a super kegel. Okay. okay. So you're sucking the water up through a big cosmic straw from the pubic bones to the tip of the tailbone. Okay. But without, there it's really hard not to tuck. I would say without tucking. It is so hard, so hard. Yes, yes. So if you find yourself talking, doing this, just reduce that effort a little bit, but you're trying to stop the flow of urine and the fart. Okay, that's, I know it's not like glamorous. And I mean, also the vaginal fart, like you're trying to, you know, close all the holes in the pelvic floor, you're squeezing them shut. Mm. And, and we squeeze the block, we pick up the pelvic floor. And then if you want to throw, you know, a little red pepper in the soup, you pick your feet up just an inch off the mat, just barely off the mat. And you don't have to do that because odds are when you pick your feet up, you're going to push off the mat and you're going to press your low back down into the floor. Mm. And we want to be able to, to just lift the feet so they hover, they sense the earth. And do this while maintaining a normal or neutral lumbosacral curve. It sounds so subtle what we're doing. It's 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 the but there's a lot going on. Yes, there's so much going on because see these systems now relax, just relax <sighs> everything because these systems are working all the time to maintain our posture. And then they're also called on to help us move. So they're not just tonic postural muscles, they're also phasic task muscles. And for a lot of us, our pot, we've been taught, you know, to suck our bellies in and, uh, you know, to think about straight lines. And mm -hmm. we've been taught that the way we stabilize and help our protect our low back is to flatten the low back. And that's not actually kinesiologically accurate. The mm. way that we protect our low back and our sacroiliac joints is by stabilizing their natural curves. Mm. Okay. Let's go one more time because it is subtle. I like yeah. to do, I'll tell you, I like to do this in threes. So, so the same thing again, I'm putting the cloth under the sacrum uh -huh, uh -huh. and then putting the block between my knees. My inner thighs are really uh, quite activated from this. Right. And that's so important because especially in yoga, asana, we don't do a lot for the groins, but the groins, the, the, the adductors are really, really important uh, for supporting the pelvic floor keeping our organs up in our body, supporting our breath, as well as helping keep our, our heads of the femurs um, positioned in the hip sockets and the acetabular fossa. Like mm. they, nothing separate, right? Nothing separate. So let's first find the neutral. You're neutral. ASIS are oriented. They're, you're rolling your pubic bones down between your legs a bit. So there really is a space here. I can yeah, you hand. can slide your, some folks, depending on how generous the glutes are, some folks can slide their hand under their low back. Some folks, only the fingers. Okay. Mm -hmm. The key mm -hmm. is what you're looking for is, okay, the orientation of the ASIS but also what's the relationship between the back bottom ribs? The back bottom ribs ideally are on the mat, but again, if you have more generous gluteus maximus, the back bottom ribs may not rest on the floor, but we want them moving in the direction of so that you're not thrusting up through the rib cage. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, this is the thing. So your your ribs, your rib cage is heavy and relaxed. Mm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Except mine's not relaxed because I'm feeling my my back is kicking in like in a good way, but I feel like there's stabilization coming from uh, be- below my shoulder blades, kind of the bottom yeah, tips yeah, of yeah, my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, because yeah. here's the thing. I love that you brought this up because guess what? Your low back is part of your core stabilization system. And there's this sheath of beautiful tissue called the thoracolumbar fascia that connects your shoulders to your pelvis and your upper back to your pelvis, your ribs to your pelvis, and it helps stabilize the body. I'm gonna be sore tomorrow, Mary. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Okay, what's next? (laughs) Okay, all right, so so I do like to do that three times. Let me tell you the functional benchmark we're looking for is you wanna be able to do that exercise without tucking or without So without pushing your low back down into the floor and without pulling your low back off of the mat, three times, 10 rounds of breath. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Now it gets um, less subtle. So in a way it gets easier, but it also gets harder because now we're going to add some load. Okay? Okay. So arms long by the sides of the body and we get positioned for bridge pose. So just comfortable foot position for you. Feet can be uh, hip width apart, which is about two fist widths or a little wider. Please, however, do not have your feet together. Okay, they know where to go. So just let your feet find their spot on the mat. Now, if you need a little extra help, You can always take hold of the long edges of the mat and pull the mat down towards your feet. That functions like an external ligament, helps stabilize you, okay? All right, so now inhale, lift the hips off the mat to a height that's comfortable for you. All right, so there you are, you're in the bridge pose. Now exhale, bring your left knee up towards your chest. Keep your hips up, inhale, put the foot down on the mat. Keep the hips up, exhale, right knee up toward the chest. Inhale, right foot down onto the mat. Now exhale, left up again and just march. So exhale as you bring a leg up, inhale to bring it down. Keep the hips up as long as you can. I want you to do this until you cannot hold your bum up and need more. (laughs) Okay. I also like to add a resistance band around my feet to make this even more challenging, but I am the devil in disguise. So, so that resistance band would go around my ankle. So I would be pushing out as well. I uh, no, I put it around the balls of my feet, uh, around my feet. Okay. So you can see maybe that I have this hair tie. No, we can't hold on. No, oh, we can't okay. see you. Let me just get one. I have one. I'm going to get one. Okay. My- okay. My resistance band. If you're liking this, especially this exercise, you are going to love our somatic strength class that you can find on laster.yoga because this torture is feeling very familiar, Mary. <laughs> okay, so, so just like, put it now on your feet, Lizzie, because um, okay. it'll slide on your ankles. Some folks will, uh, sometimes I'll also put this around my thighs. Okay. Uh, it just depends kind of what I'm feeling. Yeah. There you go. You got it. I love that expression. Yeah, keep your hips up. Now notice if you're if you're sort of sloshing your pelvis around, you want to keep your pelvis level as you march. And again, do this until you cannot hold your bum up anymore. Oof. Okay, I'm gonna try the thighs as a variation. Yeah. Very different. Oh, it's like hamstrings. Yes. Bum. And- and it's great because again, your bum is inter- intimately related to your core stabilization. And if you have SI joint problems, the, the resistance band around the thighs can really help stabilize your SI joints as you do this. And this exercise will really help your SI joints. Yeah, I'm feeling it back there. I'm feeling lower back strengthening almost. Yes, yes. Because everybody's okay. coming to the party. Two more and then I'm sweating. Yes. Okay. It's fantastic though, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So now we, you can 
Keep the resistance band around your thighs if you want. That's gonna add difficulty or you can remove it. We're gonna do a dynamic reclining Baddha Konasana. Okay, so you're still in this, you're still on All right, the I'm mat. gonna start, start without and then we'll show there's a variation. So like this. Yeah, and you've got the soles of the feet together and the, the legs open. Now you can also, if you want a little extra support, you can take your blocks and place them to the outsides of your hips as you know, stops, if you will. And especially yeah, if you feel, yeah, if it feels too tuggy in your inner thighs, right? Yeah. If it feels too tuggy, if you have a history of labral injury in the hip or you've had hip replacement, you may want to try this with the blocks. Um, now what you're going to do is you're going to keep the soles of the feet glued together and push the feet into one another. Mm. And now as you exhale, squeeze your knees toward one another a third of the way and hold, take a round of breath, then squeeze the legs together a third of the way and hold for a round of breath. Keep your feet pushing into one another, keep squeezing and now squeeze the legs comfortably toward one another. You're not trying to touch your knees, squeeze and hold. And then slowly, slowly, slowly let the legs down, pull the legs down, slowly, slowly, slowly. I can't even describe what that sensation was, Mary. It's like, <laughs> what? I, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. But so <laughs> let's try it again. Like really as I'm going to just keep going, I'm going to do a couple of rounds as we talk, but like, what are we working on here? So we're obviously working on the groins, the medial stabilizers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this helps though, if you've got tight pelvic floor or pelvic floor imbalance, this helps. Okay, because we're we're stretching it and working it at the same time. So it, we're kind of reprogramming the pelvic floor. And this is so useful in that regard. And you're working your hip rotators too. It also feels like almost, I can't even describe almost the back wall of my pelvis. Yeah. Like in, yeah. but inside. But yeah, it, so maybe look, it's a psoas or I don't know what. Oh, you're definitely, the great thing about this is so now when we're lying down in this position, we've taken the iliopsoas out of its plane, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have tight psoas, if you have tight hip flexors, this can really help relieve tightness in the hip flexors. But what this helps us do is it helps us sync up. It helps us sync up the pelvic floor, the deep abdominal muscles, and then these tiny little deep back body muscles called the multifidi. Okay, I'm gonna, so I've done two, two squeezes. What would it look like if I had a band? It would go around the thighs here? Yeah, it would go around the thighs. And this is another, if you don't wanna mess with the blocks, the band can help, especially if you've got history of hip injury. You still, soles of the feet stay together and. Yeah, it changes things, doesn't it? When you pull out all that <laughs> resistance band. You push those feet in and you open again, but you're opening um, and closing by thirds. So now when you've got the resistance band in place, you feel most of the resistance when you start to open the knees again, which is I fantastic. So this helps build what's called eccentric control. It helps us put the brakes on our movement, which reduces wear and tear in our ankles, knees, and hips. I'm feeling it with the strap now, a lot more hip flexor, uh, no, like rotators and a lot uh -huh. more um, sort of ham butt area. Yes. Bum. yes. And so my calves are suddenly shouting at me. Awesome. Totally. 
because you're getting into your lateral stabilization subsystem. So without the resistance band, when we're working on in thirds, squeezing the knees toward one another in thirds, we're really working the midline of the body and internal rotation. But as we work with the resistance band around the thighs, we're working the outer aspects of the body, the lateral body. And this is great for balance. Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay. What's next? <laughs> okay. So this, I, I think it gets better. <laughs> okay. Take both of your blocks now and you're going to place your blocks under your feet. Okay. So fat, flat sides of the blocks down, feet comfortably placed on the blocks. All right. Arms long by the sides of the body. And you're going to push your feet down into the blocks. Inhale, lift your pelvis off the mat. Okay. Now uh, exhale and take your left ankle and place it on your right thigh in the figure four pose. Uh-huh, yep. And now um, <laughs> inhale and lower the hips down toward the mat. Exhale and push up. So now we're exhaling on the exertion, on the lift. I need to move my blocks a little closer. Okay. And you feel how this is different from the the bridge pose with marching? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're keeping the pelvis as level as we can. We just don't want to add rotation. We don't want to twist, you know, through the hips and the low back. And again, you do this until you're... Uh, your bum says enough. Which is going to be soon. Maybe three oh, more. That's cool. See, we don't have to do a ton of repetitions, but what we need to do is a little bit every day. Okay, so this well, these, is the other, other thing. They feel so targeted, these movements. That's what I like about them. Yes, so totally. These are the seeds of bigger movements. This is the seed for Ardhabhada Pashamottanasana, you know, this, all of our asana arises from this sort of stuff. All of our walking, our standing arises from this sort of stuff. Now just notice on this side, the tendency to sort of drop the lifted hip side. Yeah. Like the knee wants to open or something. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're supporting the weight of the higher leg. All right. Don't let it just hang out there because mm. you don't want it to drag you down because you'll feel that in your SI joints. And this remember like you quads, like yeah. everything is happening here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we rest. Mm. And you can do, you know, if you want to do three sets of those, great. Uh, but just know there's more to come. Mm -hmm. So you may not want to do any more of those. <laughs> <laughs> let's do, let's do like three to five more on each side. I think I can do okay. that. And just, yeah, you're doing this so beautifully, Lizzie, just slow, controlled movement. That's what we want. We're not... Uh, dropping to the mat, and we're also not thrusting the hips up. You're just moving like you're moving through water. Smooth and steady. Constant resistance, if you will. Because this is how we develop what's called motion control. So that we have well-shaped movement when we change body position. So if you're a vinyasa practitioner, you want to do stuff like this because it's going to help you when you're moving, you know, from lunge position to chaturanga to downward facing dog and the like. Well, and what, you know, we've been so focused on creating this course about menopause, women sort of in the perimenopause, menopause transition and then beyond. So sort of 40. 45 plus 
really need to do more what I'm learning from you strength training like adding load and what I love about these movements is they are adding load in a super functional way building on you know helping me not just do my asana practice but they feel very applicable to life Exactly. Yes. Cause I like to feed more than one bird with one seed and especially yeah. with menopause as estrogen goes down, our bone mass changes. And that's mm -hmm. why it's so important that we work on strength or resistance training and work on adding load because that's going to help preserve our muscle mass, maybe even build muscle mass if we do this regularly enough so mm. that it prevents osteoporosis. <sighs> okay. Okay. Just rest for a moment. Just notice how you feel. It's like an inner heat. It's a warming, like a deep warmth coming. Yes, yes, yes. And just take a moment to connect with your breath again. And in particular, direct your attention to your pelvic floor and has its tone changed? Yeah, it feels more kind of elastic, more yeah. playful, and less stuck, less static. Yes, and this is something that is so necessary for our urinary health and our breath efficiency, as well as our felt sense of safety. Because a lot of us, our pelvic floor is overly tight and especially it's maybe too tight around the urethra or the anus we have these sort of this sort of functional imbalance in the pelvic floor and what we're doing right now is we're doing things that helps bring the pelvic floor into the landscape of our movement body it's now working together with the hip flexors, the hip extensors, the core stabilizers the, that are so important for our postural and motion control. Yeah, it does feel more integrated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so now when you're ready, roll to the side most comfortable for you. And I'd like you to take four relaxed rounds of breath. Breathe into the skin of the back. As you inhale, feel the skin stretch across the back ribs. And as you exhale, feel it relax. Four rounds. And then you'll slowly pull yourself up through the belly to a comfortable seated position. Okay, now we're going to do this lift that you just did, this figure four version, but we're going to do it standing in a squat position. Because okay. <laughs> again, we're adding load. Remember, we're talking about escalation ladders. So you may want a chair nearby to place your hands on the chair, or you can put your hands on the wall. It's up to you. Okay, I'm going to show with the chair. Okay, just for balance. This is just for balance. So you'll put your hands on the back of the chair or your hands on the wall. And I want you to stand uh, comfortably for you. And in, in, so your feet are comfortably placed under your hips. And then I want you to exhale and sit the hips down into, a, into the chair that isn't there. And then uh, inhale and pull yourself up to standing. So just so you know, we're just doing a body weight squat, okay? Just get the feel for the movement. All right. So now this is pretty straightforward, right? We're using yeah. both legs. Okay. So now inhale to standing. And now I want you to take your left leg and mm -hmm. place that left ankle on the right thigh above the knee. Yep. Now exhale 
and sit down into the chair that isn't there. Oh, and yeah. inhale and rise. Now it's not gonna be as big a movement, that's okay. You can cut the movement in half. You can cut it, cut it as much as you need. Do mini squats, fingertips on the chair for balance. Try not to hold on to the chair for dear life. But let me tell you something. If you've got grouchy knees, mm -hmm. and you may have grouchy knees, hold on to the chair and use the chair to help lift and lower the body because the form, the shape of the movement is more important than the amplitude, than the size. Okay, so, right. What I hear you saying is I could, I could, as a modification, I could theoretically be putting a little bit more weight on the chair Yes. as a way of making it slightly easier. I'm going to switch sides. Yes. Or I could be kind of hovering. Yes. Okay. And so if you have, you know, stress or urge incontinence, this exercise can really help. Why? Well, okay. So if we think about it, where uh, you've got one hip in um, external rotation and mm -hmm. abducted, moved away from the midline of the body. So you're stretching that side of the pelvic floor. The other side of the pelvic floor is concentrically contracting. So we're setting up this sort of dynamic opposition in the pelvic floor that can help uh, repattern the muscle and improve muscle tone. And this is so important because as we age, our pelvic muscles naturally atrophy as estrogen goes down. Mm. Just taking a couple of breaths into Dasana. Yeah, yeah, it's something, right? Mm-hmm. But do you feel, now I'm curious, Lizzie, you probably don't pay all that much attention to this. How, where, how does your bladder feel? Mm, I'm not sure that I have a lot of um, brain bladder connection other than do I have to pee or not? Um, so let me try to go there. I guess I would say spacious. Awesome. Yeah. So especially if you experience urge incontinence, you know. Uh, this can really help. Mm -hmm. And if you experience, let's say you're a runner, right? Mm -hmm. And you are worried about leaking urine when you run, this is your mm -hmm. exercise. Oh, that's super interesting. Cause I have, after my twin pregnancy, it becomes like, I always say it's like a dangerous maneuver for me to sneeze while I'm walking. Mm -hmm. It's like, this will help. This will help. Okay. Okay. Cause okay. we're just, we're amplifying what happens in the pelvic floor when we're walking and running? Because see, right. you know, the pelvic floor works, of course, as a unit, but it also has a right and left side. Mm -hmm. I'm so just pulling you back up so we can see you. So basically what you're saying is we're doing asymm with this exercise with the chair. We're doing asymmetrical things on the left and right side of the pelvic floor. Right. And really helping train the muscles to work in their natural asymmetrical pattern when we're walking and running mm. okay so, how many more exercises do we have tell me what's uh, next <laughs> one two three four four okay but they're fat but I, I promise they're pretty fast okay the, and the next one we're gonna do is uh where the next two are standing and then we move okay. back down to the floor okay and so you don't have to do like 50 of these figure four squats just mm -hmm. do now a few of them six okay, great. ten you know so now let's get rid of the chair and you're going to need a rolled blanket I guess I should say you may need the chair for balance but I don't think you'll need it Lizzie but okay. you can always keep the chair in place to put your fingertips on the back of it just so you know okay so roll up the blanket into a log lengthwise this way or do you want it the shorter way I want it the longer way. The So okay. you've got Tadasana of the blanket and you roll it up um, along that length and you just make a, yep, a, bl a blanket log and then put that parallel to the short end of your mat. So it's going to go at the front end of your mat. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Now we're going to go into a variation of warrior one. Okay. Okay. Maybe move the blanket a little on your mat a little bit more, Lizzie, because now you're going to step you're going to take, uh, let's start with the left leg. 
I start with the left just because most people are right-handed and I just like to challenge the, you know, the corpus colossal. It is what it okay. is. <laughs> okay. In this way, I really break from the tradition of asana. Right. Okay. Plus I like the left because it's a, it's associated with the feminine and I like to lead with the feminine. Okay. So just outing myself. So step your left leg over the blanket. And put your, all right, now adjust your foot so that your left heel is resting on the blanket roll. Mm. Okay. All right. Now step your right foot back comfortably for you. And also if you feel wobbly, step your right leg out to the right. Give yourself okay. more space from left to right. Hands on the hips if you'd like, or you can take your arms up. It's up to you. Now exhale and push the pelvis down into the space between the legs and come into the warrior one lunge position. A warrior one, I kept thinking warrior three. I'm like, how is this gonna work? Okay, got it. <laughs> okay, so the back heel is ideally down on the mat. The toes of the back foot are turned almost directly forward. But listen, if you need to come up onto the ball of the foot and do more of an Anjani Asana high lunge Oops. position, that's cool. Like this, right. yeah. Now lift your left heel off the blanket. Oh. Keep your heel off that blanket. I want you to pretend that the blanket has now become lava. And you cannot put your heel down on that blanket or it will burn you. This is also, if you worry about walking and sneezing at the same time, this is also your friend. And we stay for anywhere from three to 10 rounds of breath. That was five, five quick ones. Okay, All right, let me try cool. the second side. Yep, alternate, then maybe, maybe them, can... alternate the sides. And again, it's up to you if you want to be in the warrior one leg position or if you want to be in the Anjani Asana leg position. It's up to you. The key is that you feel stable. So you may need to do this so you can put a hand on the wall. Yep, and you just lift that heel and you have Barbie feet. Resist the temptation, you know, to stand out of the asana. It's hard, right? It's really hard. I'm going to do one more time on each side. It's it's like, a, it's, it's subtly hard. It's like, yeah. it's, it, it, yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But this helps so much because, again, we don't want to leak urine when we laugh, cough, or sneeze. Or when we're running or on on a rebounder, you know, doing uh, rebounding work. Because we need to so, preserve our ability to have concussive impact without leaking urine. What I am noticing, Mary, I'm surprised that you're saying that this is pelvic floor. Because what I'm feeling is a lot of the big muscles of the legs, the quadriceps, sure. the calves, yeah. the adductors on the back leg, the inner thighs like screaming. Yeah, but they're all connected. So, it's just they're louder. They're mm, bigger. That's yeah. all. But the thing is, you're also working your pelvic floor. And the other thing you're doing is you're working these large stabilization subsystems that help keep the body organized and that help keep the organs inside your body where they need to be. And that's okay. really important because we don't want our organs dropping down into our pelvic floor. Right. Right. We want that. Yeah. Okay. What's next? All right. Did you do two on each side? I did two on each side. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Do just do two or three, you know, again, don't do 20 <laughs> in there, for heaven's sake. Notice, notice how Mary's like, or three, the overachiever <laughs> in her is just like, or two, or three. But I, you know, I really make a lot of space for when we're learning these movements, they do get easier. There's an adaptation, but like the yeah. first time you're doing these movements, maybe just do one round. Like you don't yeah. have to, I I'm already no, like, I have that feeling. Like when I go for a hike, like, I'm like, I know my inner thighs tomorrow are going to be giving me a lot of sensation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. So now put your four feet on the blanket. So put the uh, balls of the feet, the toes up on the blanket, your heels are down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now place your hands comfortably on your hips and sit the hips down into the chair that isn't there. Oh, oh, 
comfortably for you. Yep. You can take your arms forward. You can take your arms forward if you need to counterbalance. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you feel all that, Lizzie? It's my calves that just don't uh -huh. want to. Yeah. Don't. This gets into your gastrox and your soleus. This is she great, says, great, great. She says with glee. I do, because we don't stretch them enough. No. These are my my sore skiing muscles. I live in the Alps. This is a skiing, biking, hiking right here. Oh. Yes. Standing. All of these muscles get really tight. And then you get into Adho Mukha Svanasana and you try to get your heels down and downward facing dog. And it feels like you've got wolves, dogs trying to dig out of your calves. And it's because they're they're tight. And we're that's not on a really efficient way to stretch them, but this is. You know, I'm also feeling kind of um, a, a, in a good way, some range of motion stuff in my ankles. Yes, yes. And if you've got plantar fasciitis, this is your friend. All right, I'm doing, I did five, I think five or okay, six. Okay, that's now great. Another that's five great. or six and then. Yeah, that's great. And you can, Ooh. you can also just do three, but hold it, mm -hmm. you know, hold it for up to 10 rounds of breath. That's up to you. Do what feels that good That sounds to horrible. You. That sounds horrible. <laughs> I like to change it up, you know, I like a spectrum of horrible. <laughs> All right. Last one. I'm going to hold it. Okay. Yeah. Now, okay. the good news is we're doing uh, one more kind of active pose, and that's going to be on the back body on the mat. And if you need to put the blanket down for padding, that's cool. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to do uh, one final stretch and then uh, a rest. Okay. All right. So you're on the back body, and I want you one at a time to bring the knees up to the chest. And then hug your knees into your chest. Bring the, and then bring the other leg up. And we're just going to hug both legs. Let's go ahead and hug both legs into the chest. Okay. So now uh, move your knees away from your body and center your knees over your hips. And your shin bones are parallel to the floor. And flex your feet like you're going to stand on them. Put your hands on your thighs, closer to your knees, yeah. And now I want you to keep your head heavy, push out through your arms and squeeze in with your legs. Mm. This is a resistive apanasana or wind release pose. Really try to squeeze the legs in while you push out through the arms and you hold this for Oh, let's say three rounds of breath and then you rest for a round of breath and then you do it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And what's the position of the pelvis in terms of the tilting we've been talking well, about? Well, hopefully you notice that now your low back is down on the mat and your ASIS are rolling up into your body because yes. you're in, you're at 90 degrees of hip flexion. So your low back has to flex your pelvis has to tuck or posteriorly tilt that's just normal but what we're doing when we're this is so great if you have low back pain and also if you have tight hip flexors because you're putting yourself in this resistive hip flexion position and that can help relieve tension by contracting and then afterward that everything is relaxing yeah, by having the muscles work appropriately as hip flexors in hip flexion with resistance, it actually said, then they can say, oh, I've done my work. I can rest now. Mm, we okay, often okay. hold unproductive tension in our muscle tissue because our muscles aren't being given the opportunity to do their jobs. Mm -hmm. And we just do, a, you know several of these i have to say mary i cannot believe how much how warm i am and how much i'm sweating from doing a quote-unquote pelvic floor series 
it's <laughs> amazing. It's this is really I'm I'm aghast at the degree to which we're using all of the associated muscles. Yeah. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. It's like there's something about it I find so satisfying. It's deeply satisfying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, part of it is the way that we're connecting to the iliopsoas as a neurosensory organ. It's mm -hmm. like inherently grounding and reduces our cortisol levels and uh, helps it feels us feel also. Go ahead. It helps us feel what? No, you go ahead. I would say it helps it... us feel safe safe and it feels to me probably because I am a woman but I feel kind of deeply it's a it, it's a deep feminine it feels like I'm connecting to a deep river of of shakti power yes yes now uh yeah I I totally agree and there's something about it that it because of the way we're centering the pelvis and our awareness that we're like it's like a goddess series mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, not to get too okay old, but... okay next? now What's we're the gonna take one? the now we're gonna take the bolster mm, sounds good yeah. <laughs> and you're going to place the bolster under your bo body. Uh, so you rest your pelvis comfortably on the bolster. And I want the weight of the pelvis supported. It'll come up into your low back a little bit, you know, just find your sweet spot. You know, when you're on the bolster, the way that you enjoy. And then uh, we're going to do first a single leg uh, hip and belly stretch and then we'll do both okay so uh i want you to bring i want you to straighten the leg that tends to be tighter and then bring the other knee up toward the chest And the tendency is going to be, and you may need to shift on the bolster a bit. You may need to put more of your bum on the bolster. You may need to put less, you know, go by feel. And just notice the tendency for that straight leg to turn out. Mm -hmm. It wants to go like that. Yeah, it's normal. Vastus lateralis, big, heavy quad. Going to pull it into external rotation, plus you're in extension, external rotation and extension, hip extension go together. But I want you to override that a little bit and just move in the direction of neutral, putting a little bit more weight in the direction of the big toe side of the heel. Okay, and push out through the, play with it, push out through the ball of the foot, push out through the heel, and just notice how you feel. Mm -hmm. it's surprisingly quieting to the brain yeah and we stay here you know for about 10 rounds of breath please don't stay here longer than 36 rounds of breath anything longer than about two minutes is too much you you lose all of these protective uh, mechanisms when you hold a stretch too long you lose this protective tissue resistance and so after you've done you know about oh 10 to 20 rounds of breath change legs and you you know you can always use a strap around the top leg if it's mm -hmm. hard for you to take the bind, just slide the strap. Uh, you can put it over the tibial tuberosity, but if you have the shin bone, but if you have sensitive knees, you can also slide it um, on the back of the thigh. Mm. So you're holding onto the back of the thigh bone. Mm. And that's really nice. And if you've got cranky knees, this can really create uh, relief mm. because you're facilitating the law of concave convex motion in the knee. 
So question here, Mary, am I actively tilting my pubic bone down over the bolster? So I want the weight of the pelvis to do the work for you. But what I want you to notice uh, is the, the hip that's flexed, the leg that's in toward the body, that side of the pelvis is doing what? It's in flexion. It's, it's lifting up. It's like tilting, uh, tucking. Yes. But the extended leg side, that side of the pelvis is doing what? Extension, back bending. Exactly. Normal alert. So, <laughs> if, so just let the weight of the pelvis and the, the weight of the legs do the work for you. Because see, if you override and try to tuck mm -hmm. or to tilt, you're messing mm -hmm. up the patterning. Mm -hmm. This is why it's not an effective psoas stretch to come into a lunge position or a hip extension position and then try to tuck the tailbone. Because mm -hmm. if you're tucking, you're shortening the iliopsoas. But if you're coming toward extension, you're lengthening it. Mm. Now stretch out both legs. If you like, if you like. Now for some folks, this can be way, 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 way too much. For some folks, a back bend is just lying down flat on the floor. So you yes, know you're... this feels amazing to me right now. But but maybe like one blanket or two blanket back bend would be a good alternative for somebody. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Or you can put your feet up on blocks, your heels up on blocks, you know, have mm -hmm. those positioned at the end of your mat. So you, again, you're reducing the amplitude. And you stay here again about no more than 20 or 24 rounds of breath, about two minutes. That's it. And you may find, oh, as I spend more time in this, I'm starting to tighten up around my back bottom ribs. If that's the case, shimmy yourself on, onto the bolster a bit more. Give more support to your pelvis. Take some of the, the weight out of the pose. And to come out of it with an exhalation, I want you to bend one knee and place that foot on the mat. I said anything about coming out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is it's time for a restorative. And then mm. you'll exhale, and place the other foot on the mat, and then just shimmy yourself a bit more onto the bolster. Just gradually easing ourselves out. And just notice, let's check in. Let's have a breath awareness check. Body breathing itself. And how do you feel in your belly, in your pelvis, in the pelvic floor? Spacious and loose. Yeah. And then when you're ready, you'll roll to the side most comfortable for you. You'll stay there for four rounds of breath. And then we get set up for Stonehenge. Mm. I have horizontal yeah. brain and the hair is so <laughs> like it's like but you can tell like when your hair gets like looser and bigger like you're happy 
<laughs> no, seriously. Uh, okay, tell us why you picked Stonehenge and then I'll describe the setup a little bit. Why does that fit well with this series? Well, because this is a lumbo pelvic hip focused series and Stonehenge is so great for folks that experience discomfort in the low back, in the sacroiliac joints, in the pelvic floor, because it puts us in a position of passive hip and lumbar flexion, which signals to our nervous system that we're no longer fighting gravity, which then tells our muscles, I can relax. The earth is supporting me. So I don't have to hold my body in a position against gravity. Mm. Mm. And I also like that because the legs are raised and supported on the lintel and pillars of the blocks and the bolster that we then have the added benefit of the weight of the thighs settling into the basin of the pelvis which is grounding and that added air quotes weight of the legs helps the muscles release too. Mm. Oh, that sounds so good. Okay. I'm going to make me big again. I'm going to show this setup. And then Mary, once I'm in the pose, um, you can mute me, please. So it'll okay. be silent. And then the plan is that Mary will talk us into the pose and then she will mute herself and there will be a spacious dose of silence. We'll all be practicing. There's nothing happening. And then Mary will bring us back, bring us out and we'll say goodbye after the pose. Okay, so what I have is our two blocks set up in a bolster across. And then I'm gonna drape my legs over. I wanna support the backs of my knees really well and adjust my calf flesh to roll it out slightly. That feels good. Before I lie down, I'm gonna cover myself up with a blanket, put on socks. You wanna be warm when you practice this pose because you will cool down a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, because I have a second blanket here, I'm gonna open it up to about this size. And then as I come down, I'm gonna wrap it around. First, I'm gonna come onto my elbows and lengthen, press into the mat and lengthen my pelvis. So le lengthen my rib cage away from my pelvis slightly. And then as I come down, I'm gonna take that second blanket and wrap it around. It just feels really nice, kind of energetically. Then cover myself up for warmth. I have a pillow here to support my head, neck, and shoulders. I snuggle it in really deeply. And then I like to fold down the top corners to softly invite my chin to be lower than my forehead. It's not tucking, but it's just a softening. And then I'm gonna use my kids' dada, their little lovey. Definitely cover your eyes. Use an eye bag or a scarf, whatever you have, but darkness is a really powerful trigger so that your nervous system gets the message that we are powering down now, moving into parasympathetic dominance. And then last adjustments, because there are no details in restorative yoga, make sure your physical body is very comfortable. And then Mary will mute me and get us started with the pose. So make any adjustments that you need now to improve your comfort by 10%. Maybe you need to adjust your blankets, your leg position, your head support. Do what you need now to improve your comfort by about 10%. The shoulders are heavy. The arm bones heavy. 
the forearms, the hands, the wrists. And you have room to breathe. Your side ribs are able to expand with the inhalation and relax with the exhalation. If you feel constrained through the rib cage, move your arms away from your body a bit to give yourself more room to breathe. Fill the body with breath. Exhale and let it go. Each inhalation, filling the body with breath. Each exhalation, surrendering to the support of the earth, the support of the props. The body heavy, soft, warm, and increasingly quiet. All of your attention directed to the body breathing itself. to the movements of the rib cage, the gentle undulation of the belly, and the soft sensations of the pelvic floor as you inhale and exhale. And when your attention wanders from the sensations of the breath, invite reconnection by directing your attention to the breath-driven movements of the belly and the pelvic floor. The breath flowing in and out of the body like a gentle river. A smooth flowing river of energy and sensation. The body breathing itself.
Fill the body with breath and let it go. Do this again. Fill the body with breath and let it go. Notice the presence of the body on the mat. Notice the texture and weight of your clothing, of the blankets, of the eye cover. Notice the air on your exposed skin. and allow your senses to expand in the space around you. And when you're ready, begin to make small movements with the fingers and the toes, allowing any movement to arise of its own accord and intelligence. Eventually rolling to the side most comfortable for you, but taking your time getting there. As you rest on the side body, breathe into the skin of the back. And when it suits you, use the arms and the inhalation to come slowly to a comfortable seated position. Breathe into the new orientation of the body. And notice how you feel. Mm. So happy. That was about 20, 25 minutes. Mary Richards, that was a tremendously rewarding practice. Thank you so, so much. It was truly my pleasure and privilege. Thank you. So I want to remind everyone to like, follow, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And all the links will be below to find out what's, to find Mary Richards on the internet, to subscribe to our New Moon Mail newsletter, to join our free course about yoga for menopause. Inhaling the breath, open the palms away from the body. With an exhalation, bring them together in front of the heart. Namaste. Namaste. May we live like the lotus at home in the muddy water. Thank you so much. <laughs>